Hello and welcome to Define Tomorrow and welcome to this session, which is where we're going to look at um, adopting Microsoft 365 within your organization. My name is Anthony Charm and I'm a business consultant um, who works with Microsoft 365 uh, and works with a large number of organizations in getting them to uh, adopt it into, uh, into their IT solutions and even more importantly, to make really good use of it as a, uh, a tool to help their business become more efficient and communicate more effectively. Um, with this session's built around just looking at five different things that I've learned through uh, doing these projects, uh, and we're going to look at those um, as we go through the presentation. But I just want to start and just say, you know, this is about the business project aspect of Microsoft 365 and not the technology project. If you come from a technology project um, side of, of things and you come from a technical side of IT, you'll know that uh, we've been very guilty in the past of taking organizations and doing IT to them, giving them things that they didn't realize that they needed, and then uh, making, you know, slowly they realize how they're going to use those. Um, th so that's, that's what a technology um, project looks like. And a successful technology project, project um, tends to be one that the users don't notice. Moving from one email platform to another is something that we, uh, you know, would consider a success if we managed to do that without any of the IT team, uh, any of the users being aware that anything has gone on. With a business project uh, and with a kind of project where we're implementing Microsoft 365, it's very different. We need to have a high impact on the users. If no one notices we've done it, then we've not made any um, you know, inroads into increasing efficiency um, and uh, better communication within an organization. We expect some short-term disruption um, but we also are ready for long-term benefits within the organization. And, and probably the most important thing is that we're not just changing technology, we're changing people's habits uh, and we're affecting the organizational culture when we get in these, um, into these kind of projects. So it always will be a little bit slower. Compute q 2 world has um, got an approach, um, a kind of documented methodology that we use, which I've popped up on the screen now. And as you can see, we've got two um, strands to that. There's two separate strands to that. The technology project, which is about managing uh, you know, sorting out identity. So that can be accessed in the cloud, moving email to the cloud, and then slowly rolling out the Microsoft 365 uh, technology aspects um, like device management um, and other aspects of, uh, of their portfolio. On the left-hand side, you've got the business project. And that is a very different aspect to, uh, to what's going on. But what you notice is that we start both of those projects with a, what we call a uh, stakeholder art of the possible session, which is really educating to the business um, of what is possible um, and what, um, what can be done with this technology. So that's the first thing I'm going to pick up on. Um, my first kind of top tip is we need to involve the business and the whole business in um, a Microsoft 365 adoption project. We need to form a project board, which has got people who are not only senior in the business, but also capable of making decisions and capable of understanding um, the benefits and the, the, you know, the ability for technology to give um, an, an advantage, a competitive advantage to a business. So one of the first things we always do in these projects is to form a project board. Um, not too many people there, enough so that it's a, an agile unit with good representation, from across the key areas of the senior management in the business. Um, and they then we work with them um, and they form a project board that can uh, help drive the project through. We also involve the business by um, locating a number of adoption champions, people who are key from within the different departments in the business, um, who understand how those departments work. Because to be honest, in IT, we often don't understand what actually goes on within individual departments. Um, so we, we gather those adoption champions. And what we do there is start with this kind of art of the possible demonstration. And that's an important one because it's not about the technology, it's about how it can be applied to the business. So within an art of the possible demonstration, um, we will show them a number of use cases um, of how the technology can be used in our case in a fictitious business. Um, and the idea is it whets their appetite and shows them the different technologies that are available within the Microsoft 365 portfolio um, and, and how they can then apply those to their business. 
The second uh, tip here is setting your project objectives. It's important up front to decide what you're trying to achieve within a project. Um, key thing there is to not try to be too ambitious. Um, we like to pick off a number of, um, of objectives which we can make measurable and that we can monitor throughout the project so that we know whether we're making progress in the, in the direction of those objectives or not. Um, and typical examples of things like that are, um, you know, we want to look at how we can reduce the amount of email within people's inboxes. Um, one of the key issues that we have at the moment is that the majority of communication within a business and outside of a business um, is done um, within uh, someone's inbox. So we're getting spam emails in there, we're getting suppliers trying to sell us new products in there, um, but we're also getting um, business critical information. We're getting information from our customers um, and we're getting information from our partners and from other people in the business. And it's all going into one place. Um, so Microsoft 365 actually um, introduces lots and lots of additional ways to communicate within your business. It could be that you're looking at um, you know, your intranet as part of that, or YAMA as part of that for that organizational wide um, communication. It introduces the ability to do kind of one-to-one -one chats and one-to-many chats, um, video meetings, which we're all kind of uh, so used to nowadays, are a key element of that. And they're very, very useful ways to communicate. Um, and they taking the, all of these things are slowly taking um, the workload away from our inbox. So it's important to notice that um, when you're doing that, um, we need to understand and lay down some rules as to how people um, are going to use those new mechanisms uh, for communicating. So we've kind of stolen a diagram here from Microsoft, which breaks this down into uh, to three different areas. The outer loop communication, that organizational wide communication, um, we like to put products in place um, like a, a good SharePoint intranet, um, and uh, that's supported by uh, Yammer, which is becoming more and more integrated into, uh, into that environment um, all the time um, to provide that organizational wide communication. So when the managing director wants to do a, uh, a business update or a COVID update or something like that, he can you know, record a video or publish an article um, within the intranet, and that can be announced for using um, Yammer or uh, Teams Communities, as it's uh, slowly being renamed, um, to highlight that, that article. And then also, he's um, able to provoke some conversation around that. So if he wants to, he can open up conversation within Yammer for people to feedback on, on what he said. Um, so that's the kind of outer loop of communication that we look at. Um, the inner loop of communication is that is really kind of in in within your departments um, and um, within the departments within your organisation, um, and that's generally handled by teams. Um, and then you know Outlook and email still has its key role to play in there, where, which is in that targeted communication um, and a lot more around communication with external people. So with all of these different mechanisms of communication that you're putting in place, you need to set some rules. So we create a communications framework, or we often refer to it as a communications charter, um, to enable people to understand what is the right mechanism for them to be using for communicating at any point, um, and any different type of, of information. So there's a, a on the right-hand side of the slide is a, an example, which is our one from internally. It's a flowchart in effect. Um, which is based on various use cases. Um, you know, so if the managing director is saying, right, I want to be able to uh, communicate across the whole business and I want to provoke some feedback for it, he'd follow the line down that, um, that communications charter flow chart and get to the point where he says, right, I'm publishing this as an article on, um, uh, on uh, our intranet and I'm provoking and encouraging response via Yammer. Um, if it's just purely a social communication, so you have um, things like a cycling club or a, bit, a book club, or things like that in your organization, they're things that can be handled by Yammer, uh, and that's taking those away from, uh, from your inbox. But other things like departmental communication, that could be done with chat or with posts um, or with notifications um, within the Teams environment. So when we, uh, we look at a use case there, which is kind of, you know, a member of an, a department is talking to another member of the department about a particular project.
then this would guide them to the, the right place to do that. So it's important to realize that, you know, this is, uh, you know, a carrot, not a stick. Um, it's not something that we're going to police very heavily within organizations. It just identifies the best way for people to communicate. Um, and it's important that when we've agreed that and when the project board has signed that off, um, that that is then integrated into any training we deliver as part of the project. Point number four that I just wanted to uh, to raise, and this is a very common one, uh, and people do get into uh, a lot of trouble around this, is that you need to think about your existing line of business systems when you're implementing Microsoft 365. If you look at that wheel on the right-hand side, that is the uh, the Microsoft 365 applications. Um, I think if you look at about um, somewhere between half past, uh, half, half past 11 to midnight, it just says, and so much more. Uh, and we see that we see new applications being launched into the uh, the Microsoft 365 ecosystem all the time. But the thing is, you need to protect your existing line of business systems. Microsoft 365 is potentially the biggest shadow IT problem that you're ever going to face if you let people just take that to all of those applications and build um, their own solutions from that. So. A key element at the beginning of a Microsoft 365 um, project is reviewing your line of business applications and saying, hang on a minute, we've paid a fortune for um, Salesforce as a CRM solution. We need to make sure that we're not, by implementing external you know, additional solutions, detracting from the fact that we're paying good money for that. That should be our single point of, um, uh, of reference for the relationship with all of our customers. Um, we don't want people taking elements of Microsoft 365 and um, building their own solutions. We, um, Barry and I, very um, early on, um, you know, years ago, were working with a hospital and we, we discovered that um, their um, optometry department had created an access database that they were running the whole of the business on or the whole of the department on. And it had been written by someone who'd left the organization a long time back and it had never been backed up. Um, so what you need to avoid is that kind of thing happening because there is so much potential in elements of Microsoft 365, um, like Microsoft Lists, like um, the Power Platform, so Power Automate, um, and all of those elements for people to develop their own systems that detracts from the line of business systems that a business has provided for them. So uh, yeah, you need to be aware of that risk uh, and really manage how you're rolling out these applications um, and uh, doing what you can to make sure that, that people aren't going to go away and build their own uh, business solutions without you knowing about it. The fifth point I was going to pick up on is adoption training. So it's so, so important to, uh, to get this training element right. Um, and we've moved on a long way from the days where we could pick people up um, take them into a dedicated training room or take them out of the business for a day and give them a full immersion into uh, um, the, the product and how it should be used. It's, it, that doesn't work anymore, uh, especially you know, nowadays people are more expecting to have bite-sized training, to, uh, to watch a short video, to uh, then be able to go back and watch that video again when they want to, um, and, it, and also be able to, um, to talk to their colleagues and talk to uh, the departmental champions uh, about how to approach a particular issue within Microsoft 365. So we're moving towards a more blend, blended approach. Um, and especially in this environment, it's not just about product training. It's not just how to use the product, it's how to use the product within the context of our business. And that's where we come back to adding those elements of training, um, related to the communications charter. Here's how to use, here's how to publish um, an article on the internet, uh, but here's the framework to say when you should be doing that and when that should just be a post in a departmental team. Um, so yes, it's, uh, it, it, it is a, a very, very important part. Um, we are rolling out training at, at the moment for a, kind of a fair number of organizations, and that's consisting of 45 minute video-based training, um, which is you know, delivered live um, with someone sat answering the, the questions and answers, um, the Q&A sessions through that. And that seems to be working really well. Um, and what we realize is we need to deliver a number of like sessions like that to ensure that we pick up everyone in the organization. So those are my five top tips. 
Um, just to uh, to summarize what I've said there, uh, I think the important thing here is to realize that um, rolling out Microsoft 365 within an organization is a business project. You've got to involve people from across the business. We can't, um, you know, as IT professionals, we can't do this to the business. We need to be doing um, this alongside the business. And yes, they probably won't grasp some of the concepts of that, uh, to start with, um, but with, uh, through an art of the possible demonstration, um, you can start to whet their appetite, make them think about where they can use these tools within their part of the business. Um, so involve the business, set some really clear and measurable goals um, that you can monitor throughout the project and talk about with the, uh, the project board and with the departmental champions and across the organization throughout the project, just to show that you're making progress. Um, look at, um, you know, with all those new ways of communicating in teams, do seriously consider putting together a communications framework or a communications charter um, to direct people to the right places for each type of communication that they're using. So you're getting the real benefits of teams being that hub for communication and collaborations. And protect your line of business applications. That's probably the uh, the one where most people get into, uh, into trouble. It's very, very good to see the functionality that's available in Microsoft 365, but it does tend to uh, drive um, shadow IT. And uh, you get these, what Microsoft referred to as citizen developers who are grabbing a process within the organization, um, seeing it in isolation and automating that process and not realizing what it, um, you know, where it really should live, which is probably in a line of business application and how taking that out of there and doing that separately is detracting from how other departments are uh, interacting with that data. And, and the fifth point, just plan your training. So um, that's uh, been good to go through those with you. Um, it's really, really, um, you know, we're, we're really up for talking to anyone about projects they're working on at the moment. Uh, we've got a vast amount of experience uh, in delivering Microsoft 365 projects successfully across businesses of all sizes. Uh, and if you've got any questions, then do reach out to uh, your contacts within Computer World. Thank you very much for your time.